This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. One day the devil came to him, for he was a minor demon, asked him to torture some humans. With his two friends in tow, Middens and El Sapo, the Baron Mondo Van Duren, on Nightmare Theatre. Um, hi, excuse me, uh, can I help you with something? Or, are you a friend of El Sapo's? Are you looking for him? Or Hello. I'm not sure we've been introduced while I'm in this forum. My name's Leonard Abernathy. Uh, I've been here for almost 20 years, but you probably know me as Mittens the Werewolf. I suffer from lycanthropy, but there's no full moon tonight, so I didn't turn into a werewolf. I normally stay away while in this form, and El Sapo never seems to notice. I hope my being in this form doesn't complicate matters. If it does, I can perhaps go away for a bit. No, you don't, you don't have to go. You can stay. Actually, it might be nice to have an intelligent conversation for once. But first mm. things first, have you seen El Sapo today? I have not. I suspect he's off somewhere making a fool of himself, embarrassing your fine organization, probably drunk on cough syrup. You're probably right. You know, I really ought to look into replacing that guy. Well, I certainly have an affection for El Sapo. I think that's a grand idea, sir. Do you normally film on full moons? I'm available any time the moon is in full. Oh, by the way, while I was sitting here, I was thinking it'd be just great if El Sapo planned out the movies in advance and cleared them with you prior to the show. That way, they'd always be here, and he didn't have to run off. You know, that's a great idea. That really is a good idea. Thank you. I think you'll find that I'm very efficient, very ambitious, also a team player who will never. Hey, boss. Oh, good. Who is that guy, and why is he wearing Mittens clothes? That's Mittens, you moron. Don't you know your own pet when you see him? Where have you been? Do you have a movie even? I don't know that guy. Sadly, I was down at the bus station all day and time just got right past me. <sighs> the bus station, how plebeian. Doesn't the show start at the same time every week? You'd think you know how to get the movie ready. Yes, you would think that. So do you have anything to show, El Sapo? I do, I found this under a bus. It's another chapter of The Phantom Creeps. I'm gonna go root around down in the cellar and see if I can't find something. Can you run this while I go? And keep an eye on that guy. I don't know who he is. Sure, go find something and we will run what you gave us. Well, folks, sit back, relax, as we present the spellbinding fifth chapter of The Phantom Creeps called Thunder Rails here on Nightmare Theater.
All right, Smith. Go to the back road and make a thorough search of that car. Take Mallory with you. You open the doors. Get in that place keep quiet. Landing gear. Take him in your car, boys. You know where. All right. Let's see if the boys with Mallory have found that mysterious box of sorcerers. Can you see anything down there through the fog? Containing Zorka's secret? Must be. I found it in Captain West's car. Take it to our laboratory. We don't dare to try to smuggle it out of the country for a while. Mallory, I want you to extract some of the power we believe to be in that box. It's highly dangerous. I can't promise. But you can try, and will. All right, I can take charge. Contact me later at headquarters. That's the rescue, Jim. What's in that box? Good. You know how to use them? It's a big idea. Well, I'll drop down lower and you do as I tell you. <laughs> Pull up in and throw it as far ahead as the car as you can. Dropping fire apples. He won't hit us. Not with his pal here. Get away. Try to drop one between Jim and the spy. Let's get out of here. He'll lay the Nixon right down on this. Who's that? Good. He ought to be safe now. We'll get him. 
get my car and back after it. Was it broken landing gear? Well, you would have to remind me of that. Well, we got the land done tonight. I hope those fellows have left the airport. is coming back. Perhaps my element is in it. Yeah, and maybe the mob's in it. I shall use my divisualizer and vanish. You hide the car back there in the shadow end and keep watch. Ready for rough landing. Pick Jim up, and we'll come back here and look the ship over. Suppose the spots come and take it. They can't while we've got this. They got away with that box of Zerkin. Let's get Jim, anyhow. Jim, we have things to do. That's nothing new. Move on. Some fingerprints on the panel I wanted to get, now they've been wiped off. Well, maybe I brushed against them. No, I noticed them there before we left. I'd hoped that whoever had the box would bring it back here, but they didn't. I guess those foreign agents still have it, then. Yeah, it looks that way. We'll have to keep them from shipping it out of the country. Can you imagine what a hostile nation could do with a weapon that would put people into a state of suspended animation? I'd rather imagine it than say it. They could conquer the world. Say, don't give anything out to your paper about that element being missing. I don't want it to get out. There's only one chance to find it. They evidently took Mallory with them. I told him once that if he ever got into a jam to try to get us on the short wave. I'll camp on the set from now on. The spies have taken my element. Do you know where that office is? Yeah, in the city. I know the building. Take me there. catch you sleeping on the job again. Yes, but boy, Where have I... you brought me? Never mind that. All we want you to do is tell us how to use a power we know is in there. It would be fatal to anyone who opened that box and exposed its contents to the air. Quit stalling. I'm not asking you to do it. Al here doesn't mind what happens to him. He'll open it. Sure, I can open anything. But even if he succeeds in opening it, what can I do? Extract some of the power. 
That'll take some very special apparatus. I think you'll find everything you need here, Mallory. Get busy. Give me my hand, Smith. The spies have an office in that building, and they call it a language school. <laughs> Prepare a code message to our leader, telling him there's been a delay in shipping the object we have acquired, but that it will be done without fail. You understand this may cause death, or at least suspended animation. Sure, go ahead. All right, take this. Slide back the small disc and insert the end of the tube into the opening. Sure. Rankin, my statement was true. Did you get some of the element? Yes. All right. Now bring him to, like you did Jim Daly. I'll try. Put him on a cut. I'll report to the chief. Rankin's calling on the short wave from the laboratory. Rankin? Yes? Yes? That's good. Be sure to isolate some of the power from that box. Our leader is expecting us to get control of this great secret. With it, we can conquer the world. They have a laboratory. Do you know where it is? I only know it's out of town on the south road. We will find it. How? If we get anywhere near the meteorite, my Nyamata will lead us to it. Gee, what'd you wake me up for? I was having a swell dream. Get the car warmed up. We got a job to do. We'll be back. And don't you try to escape. The door's locked from the outside, and there's an extra guard out there. Keep your eye on him, Al. Leave it to me, boss. Put that element in something so it can be carried. If I can, you'd better. You go get some sleep. I'll keep trying to get Mallory. Come here a minute, will you? You please watch this so it won't boil over? Sure. What'll I do if it does? Just call me. Bob West. Calling Bob West. Calling Bob West. This is Mallory. Hello, Bob. Okay, Mallory. This is Daly. Bob, I got him. You know where you are? No, but the mail plane just went right over. No, I was brought in blindfolded. But I know it's out in the country, and not more than 50 miles from town, as a guess. Tell him I'll fly the mail course in an army ship as soon as it gets light. The anemometer will indicate when I'm over him, providing the element's still there. Bob will fly the mail course as soon as it gets light with an army ship.
according to this neometer, we are close to my element. How'd you get out? Somebody left the door open and stole the meteorite at the same time. Did you see anybody? No, but a car just left. Yeah, I saw it. The neometer reacted to it. That's where it's gone, all right. Anything around here? I saw a car in a shed beside the building. Okay, let's go. That Captain West in the car that we left at our hideout? Yeah, and he's coming from the direction of the hideout. Follow him. Maybe he's got Zarka's gadget. Phone your office and tell Daly to bring the men. Well, hello and welcome back. My new friend and I were discussing Hitchcock's early work as we wait for El Sapo to return. It's really nice to be able to talk to someone who knows Rear Window is a movie and not a seat on the bus. 1954, Grace Kelly, Jimmy Stewart. 
wonderful film. See, that's what I'm talking about. Anyway, we hope you enjoyed Thunder Rails, the train hit that man and the man is most likely dead unless we are to believe that a miracle occurred. Speaking of miracles, it would be a miracle if El Sapo showed up with a movie. Hey boss, I think I found a good movie. Now I haven't seen it yet, but I really do think it's a good one. Let me see. <sighs> the Little Shop of Horrors, directed by Roger freaking Corman. My God, man, you passed this off as a film? Back in my quarters, I have the whole Alejandro Jodorowsky box set on Blu-ray. Shall I go and get it? Uh, no, no, I appreciate the offer, but we don't have time right now. We might as well run this one. So sit back, relax, as Nightmare Theater presents The Little Shop of Horrors. My name is Sergeant Joe Fink. Working the 24 hour shift out of homicide. And this is my workshop, the part of town that everybody knows about but that nobody wants to see. Where the tragedies are deeper, the ecstasy's wilder, and the crime rate consistently higher than anywhere else. Skid Row, my beat. terrifying period in the history of my beat began in a little run-down floor shop called Mushniks. Ah, good morning, Mrs. Shiva. How's things today? Oh, the same as usual, Mr. Mushnik. My sister's nephew, Stanley, died in Little Rock, Arkansas. Oh, what happened? He got blown up. Who knows how? That's nice. Well, you would like, maybe, as usual, some flowers for the funeral. Should all acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? I thought possibly, uh, because I always give to you all my funeral business, uh, maybe you should possibly give to me uh, a little cut rate. Look on me, Mrs. Shiva. What am I, a philatelist? I sell on Skid Row nothing but cheap carnations. And I should give you a cut rate. I can't even afford water for the flowers. To my throat, I would be giving a cut. I dreamt I dwelt in marble halls with vassals... Get up from the back! Excuse me, Mrs. Shiva, that Seymour... Uh, he's a nice boy. Why don't you let him see? What? See? Look, here I got a new customer, brand new in the yellow vest. I should let the cleanup boy, but I can't even afford, chase him out right away. Flower as fresh as the springtime, Mushniks. Hello. Oh, hello, Dr. Farb. What can I do for you today? Listen, Mushnik, I haven't got much time. Send me over two gladiolas and the fern. Excellent. That's two dozen glads, one potted fern. No, 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 Mushnik. Two gladiolas and one fern. You want I should put two gladiolas in the pot with the ferns? No, one fern, one piece altogether, three pieces. I need it for my waiting room. What? A filling corral. Good, I'll drill a bigger hole. You mean you want two crummy gladiolas and one crummy fern? What kind of a decoration is that? Listen, it's my flower budget for the week, Mushnik. Who can be a dentist on Skid Row? All right, excellent. I'll send Seymour right away. Who am I to argue with science? Mm. Make it snappy. 
Now you are going to get it. Oh, you are going to get it. Look. See Mark Prelboin? Now, Mr. Shiva, we were talking from the funeral flowers, but the little of funeral. Did you call me Mr. Mushnick? No. I was calling John D. Rockefeller for to make a loan on my Rolls Royce. Sorry I said it. Now look, Seymour. You take two gladiolas. You'll cut them nice and even. You'll take one foin. You'll wrap them in a package. And you'll take them to Dr. Farr. Right? Well, go already! Now, what can I do for you, sir? Uh, my name is Burson Fudge. Excellent. I am Gravis Mushnick. Oh, that's a good one. Now, who's going to get my roses? I'll take care of you, Mrs. Shiver. Come right over here. You would like maybe some orchids for a nice girl? No, I think I'd like a couple of dozen carnations. Oh, carnations? A person can't turn around these days that somebody shouldn't drop dead. You've had more than your share of bad luck, Mrs. Shiver. Bad luck, she calls it. You should have so many people kick off. You would have somebody fall on the top of you, too. What about the carnations? You said you wanted some roses. Yeah, for Stanley. My carnations. You should see what that Seymour is. Oh, here are your carnations. Wait, I'll wrap them for no, you. that's all right. I'll leave them here. Why not? Of course, what else? They are all right? Well, I've had better. Well, this is a small shop. Oh, that's okay. You know, those big places, they're full of pretty flowers, expensive flowers. And when you raise them for looks and smell, you're bound to lose some food value. I like to eat these little out-of-the-way places. Oh! Such a thing, eating flowers. Look, don't knock it until you try it, huh? Look what happened. This is what I was trying to tell you before. Look on him, everybody. Look at the quality of his work. I ask you, when I fire him, where is he going to get such another good job? Does he mean I'm fired? No, I'm electing you president from the United States. Yes, you are fired. Gravis, you can't do that. Who, who can't? I didn't mean it. You didn't mean it. You never mean it. You didn't mean it the time you put up the bouquet with the get well card in the funeral parlor and sent the black lilies to the old lady in the hospital. You didn't mean it. But this time, I, Gravis Musnik, mean it. He means it. But gee, Mr. Musnik, don't I always try to do what's right? And I'm crazy about flowers. I like flowers almost as much as Audrey does. Excellent, you're fired. Why don't you give him a chance to resurrect himself? I give him a chance to quit. I ain't gonna quit. You're a brave boy, you're fired. But that ain't fair, Mr. Mushnick. You know what I'm doing? I'm working on a special surprise plant just for you. I'm growing a plant like you ain't never seen before. Excellent. I can't even sell the plants I got in my shop. out, you. Now, wait a minute. He's got a new kind of plant you want to look at. I don't look on flowers, Mr. Yellow Vest. I got ancestors in the flower business for 200 years, but I got one shop on Skid Row, one stinking shop. I don't even like flowers. No, you don't understand what I mean. Look, I've eaten in flower shops all over the world, and I've noticed that the places that have the most weird and unusual plants do the best business. See? 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 What is this, a tango? All right. Explain me more. Well, I remember one place that had a whole wall covered with poison ivy. People came from miles around to look at that wall, and they stayed to buy. The owner got rich. No. He scratched himself to death in an insane asylum. Oh, that was my cousin Harry. All right. All right. You go home, and you get this fancy schmancy plant, and you bring it back here. And if Mr. Yellow Vest Fouch says it's a draw, you still got a job. If he don't, out you go to Bodie, right? Don't worry. You'll like it. You'll see. <laughs> K. You've been listening to Music for Old Invalids. Our next selection is entitled Sick Room Serenade. Seymour, is that you? Yeah, Ma. Hey, you're not to my tongue. But Ma, I already seen your tongue. Have you no sympathy for your poor mother? 
laughing at her and mocking her realness, and she's got one foot in the grave. Oh, I didn't mean it. Oh, you never mean it. Oh, come on, look at my tongue. That tongue's a tongue, Ma. They all look the same to me. Oh, did you stop at Dr. Mallard's and get the results of my tests? Yeah, he said there's nothing wrong with you. Oh, not Dr. Mallard. He, he's one doctor I thought would tell the truth. He said you should be playing fullback for the Rams. He wants me dead. I'll bet he's assistant coroner. Oh, I can't stay. He, and I know I've got my goiters coming back. I can feel it every morning after breakfast. Yeah, that's when you take those great... Oh! What you got, a little surprise for me? Open it up and see. Right. <gasps> oh, <laughs> Dr. Slurp Saddle's famous tonic. Oh, wait here. To be taken internally or externally for pain and neuritis, neuralgia, headache. If hit by a truck, call your physician. Alcoholic contact, 98%. <laughs> Oh, Seymour, you'll never know what this is going to do for me. Oh, I can feel that surge of warm help going through me already. Look, Ma, I got to get my plant and hurry back to the shop. You mean that lousy weed out in the kitchen? Yeah, and if Mr. Mushnick doesn't like it, he's going to fire me. Apparently... My hearing is going out on me. I get the distinct impression that your job security depends on what Mushnick thinks of that thing. Gee, it looks worse than it did this morning when I went to work. I wish I knew what to do with it. Well, if you asked me, I'd pitch it out in the trash. I don't like my house cluttered up with rotten vegetables. Look, Ma, I gotta hurry. Can I bring you anything? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Bring me the evening news. They're running a, a self-diagnosis contest. The winner gets to go to the Mayo Clinic. <laughs> Bye, Ma. Bye, son. I'll see the rosy at your dawn. Drink to me, old freeway and thine eyes, and I will... I put this on my bill. Well, here it is, everybody. What do you think of it? Well, it sure is different. It looks delicious, but don't you think it's kind of stale? Well, it hasn't been feeling too well. You called that a fancy plant. It looks like it never spent an LT day in its entire life. I don't care. I like it anyway. You, you like even skunk cabbage. Yeah. What kind of a plant is this, Seymour? Well, I'm not sure. I got the seeds from a Japanese gardener over on Central Avenue. He found them in with an order he got from a plantation next to a cranberry farm. Fine, fine. You don't even know what is this plant you're growing. Well, well I gave it a name. What name? Oh, gee. What? You gave it a dirty name? You can't even mention it? Well, I named it Audrey Jr. <gasps> you named it after me? Oh, really? Well, that's the most exciting thing anyone's ever done to me. You poor kid. I don't think it's so much I should keep on spending $10 a week on your salary. But, Gravis, he named it after me. I know, and if they keep it, they'll name it Mushnick's Folly because I'll be in jail for non-payment of taxes. Are you crazy? Who, who? You, you. That's probably the only plant of its kind in the world. Don't you realize if Seymour can nurse that thing back to health, you'll have people coming here from all over? You think so, you found it? I know so, you Mushnick. Now, that's all I'm saying on the subject. Besides, I've got to get home. My wife's making gardenias for dinner. Good night, you pal. Good night. And I'll see you tomorrow. Crazy about kosher flowers. He's a nice man. Maybe he knows what he's talking about. Maybe he's not so stupid. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll keep you and this dumbbell junior for a week. If you can nice it back to health, you both can stay. If you can't, you're both fired. Oh, gee, thank you, Mr. Mushnick. Don't feel sad, Seymour. Don't waste your pity on me, Audrey. I'm not worth it. Who says you're not? Everybody. Yeah, I know. But I think you're a fine figurative of a man, and, and I know that Audrey Jr. will be the sweetest thing in the whole wide world. Well, I don't know. I've given it every kind of fancy fertilizer and atomic plant food and distilled mineral water you can buy, but it just gets sicker and sicker. Don't worry. You're going to be another Luther Glendale. Pasadena. Burbank. Good night, Seymour. Good night, Audrey.
What's the matter, little plant? Haven't I done everything I could for you? Where did I goof? You're the first little plant I ever tried to grow, and if you die, I don't know what I'll do. Please don't die. I'll get you some water, okay? Opened up just like you do every night at sunset. I wish I knew how to make you grow. Here, let me move this out of your way so you can breathe. Ow! 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 ow. Hey, what happened? How come you woke up? Blood? You like blood? Oh, you must be kidding. Well, we'll see. what I'm doing for you. Ow! Oh, who would have thought it? Well, I guess there's just no accounting for people's tastes. Mother, isn't he beautiful? Isn't he delicious? Isn't he got the two dollar raise? What happened to your fingers? Bee stings. Uh, so how come I'm all of a sudden so wonderful? Five bees, one from each finger? Ten bees. Did you say I was getting a two dollar raise? Correct, my very excellent Seymour. Ten bees. What did I do now? Don't you know what you did? Just look. Oh, boy, look at that. It grew. It's almost a foot long. Isn't it empirical? It grows like a cold sore from the lip. <laughs> oh, hello, young pretty ladies. What can Gravis Mushnik do for you? Well, we saw your sign outside. About the Audrey Jr. So we thought we'd come in and take a look. Well, give a look. That makes four people a day who've come in just to look at it. Oh, did sure. Is that just too much? Oh, what kind of plant is it? It's an Audrey Jr. Where was it you got in trouble with 10 bees? Well, is that all? I mean, doesn't it have a scientific name? Yes, of course, but who could denounce it? You oh, would like maybe wow. to buy something. Well, we don't have any money, except $2,000. <clears throat> but that's just to spend on flowers. So we don't have any of our own. Isn't that a drag? You got just $2,000 just for to spend on flowers? Mm -hmm. That's right. Who died? The Chamber of Commerce? Well, we're from Cucamonga High School. And we're building a float for the Rose Bowl Parade. Which is made out of flowers. Thousands of them. And we're on the committee that picks the florist. And then glues on the flowers. <sighs> Gee, that sure is a mad plant. Wow, yeah. Seymour here invented it. He did. Oh, thousands of plants. Oh, girls, oh, girls, oh, girls, oh, girls, oh, girls, oh, girls, please don't oh. damage the horticulturist. Tell me, how come you don't buy all these thousands of flowers from Gravis Mushnik? My flowers got something the others don't. What's that? They're cheap. Well, gee, if your shop is good enough to develop the Audrey Jr., I guess it can get us everything we need. Yeah, we'll talk it over with the rest of the committee. Excellent. Well, we got to run now. Bye, all. Bye, Bye. Bye. Bye, girls. A son. A son. Look, Audrey. I got a son. Oh, gee, Mr. Mushnick. What, Mr. Mushnick? I don't want you should call me Mr. Mushnick anymore. I want you should call me Dad. Okay, Dad. Isn't that beautiful? Seymour Krellboyne, come over here, my son. I want to talk on you about the future. Look on this fly trap. Look on it. Soon we got no more skid row. We will be rich, us. I am building for you a giant greenhouse in which you are making impossible flowers, which in turn I am selling at ridiculous prices in my giant new flower saloon in Beverly Hills. Do you see that big sign in the sky? It is saying, Gravis Mushnik in French. Isn't it exciting? And we'll have an orchestra right by the cash register. And Gravis will wave his arms. And the orchestra will play Mendelssohn's spring song. 
And I'll come out in a gown wrapped by somebody expensive and say... The carnations are $600 a dozen, two dozen for a thousand. It's a bargain. Get them while they last. Stop shouting. My uncle Marsh's brother Yankel just passed away. He tried to fly New Jersey. Tell me. How much are the carnations today? The carnations are $600 a dozen. And why are they letting him run around loose? Please, please excuse my son, Mrs. Shiva. Just point to anything in the store and it is yours. <laughs> That's right. The cash register, maybe, huh? Ah, wait a minute. Here. Here are several dozen carnations on the house, courtesy of Gravis Mushnik de Bloom Tycoon. That's my dad. Thanks. Thanks very much. Only tell me, why are you so happy? Not only did my uncle Marsh's brother, Yankel, die, Tennifling, New Jersey. You should also give some flowers to that poor dead plant there. Good morning, Mr. Mushnik. Good morning. Good morning, Mrs. Shiver. Look what happened to my plant, Dad. Who are you calling Dad? Who, who? Oh, no. And it was so beautiful just a few seconds ago. Excellent. Just a few seconds ago, I gave away dozens of carnations free to Mrs. Shiva. I didn't mean it. You have perhaps an explanation. No, but if you give me a minute, I'll think of one. I can see it all now. We are in the poor house. That big sign in the sky, it is reading, Seymour Krellboy and rest in peace in Arabic. Oh, you've got to give him another chance. You promised me a week, Mr. Mushnik. I'll sit up all night with that plant. It'll be healthy in the morning. You'll see. I promise. I promise. Ah, hello and welcome back. We hope you're enjoying The Little Shop of Horrors. If the film seems rushed, it's because Corman bet someone that he could make a film in two days. Now, he won the bet, but you, the viewing audience, lost. Some of you will notice the great actor Dick Miller. He was offered the role of Seymour, but he opted for Mr. Fouch instead. And yes, he did really eat those flowers. Now this screenplay was written by Charles B. Griffith. Griffith also wrote A Bucket of Blood, Attack of the Crab Monsters, Death Race 2000, and many, many more. Did you know he was an uncredited writer on Barbarella? He collaborated, but didn't get any screen credit. Now that's fascinating. And did you know that Charles Griffith is also Andy Griffith's cousin? Sapo, that's not true. All right, boss, I made it up. I just wanted to have something to add to the conversation. You should stick to what you know, El Sapo. At the moment, I can't think of what that might be, but I'm sure there's something. The man playing Seymour, Jonathan Hayes, was also in The Terror. Corman seems to use the same actors over and over. He uses the same sets and same music as well. He was a master at saving money. Now that's true, you have a good eye for faces. You should appear like this more often. Oh, I'd love to. It's the darn full moon. If only there was some way to make it so the moon didn't affect me. If so, I could assist you all the time with these films. I'm an encyclopedia of film knowledge. I can talk for hours and hours on any film you name. That's interesting, that's so interesting. Mm. It would be nice to have someone around who not only knew about film, but knew when to have one ready to show each week. Let me think about this. While I think, why don't you folks get back to The Little Shop of Horrors here on Nightmare Theater. Feed me. Feed me. Feed me. Who said that? You said that. You said that. Mm, feed me. You said that. You can talk. I got a talking plant. Say it again. Feed me. Oh, boy. I never been to college and I ain't been around much. But I'd have been willing to bet there ain't no such thing as a talking plant. But I'll take your word for it. Gee, Junior, I'd, I'd like to feed you. But I used up all my fingers. Feed me! Oh. 
Look at me. I'm all cut to pieces. But maybe I can find another drop here someplace. That's the best I can do. More. More. But I'm already anemic. Feed me more. Gee, Junior, I'd be happy to give you anything I got. But I gotta keep a little blood for myself or I'll be in worse shape than Mom. Mm. I'm sorry, Junior. Oh, I'll go for a walk. Maybe I'll think of something. Bother me, I got problems of my own. Feed me. I'm sorry, pal. I'm fresh out of blood. Talk to somebody else. <laughs> I'm hungry. I don't care what you are. Can't you see I'm knocked out? I just killed a man. I'm a murderer. You think it's fun to be a murderer? You think it's fun to haul around a sack full of food? Oh, no, Junior. What kind of guy do you think I am? <laughs> I'm starved. Maybe just a snack. <laughs> huh? mm, that looks great. <laughs> now that is what I call a salad. What do you call that salad? Cesarean. Well, before the next course, I think I'll have a nice cigar. All right? You would like maybe a cigar? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you don't smoke cigars. Right? What am I thinking about? Where are the matches? Oh, boy. You know what I found? What? I'm looking for the matches. And I found I left the money in the other suit. Here's your mock chicken legs. You don't have any money? So what else is new? All right. 
All right. I made a mistake. After all, a man is entitled. Go on. This is your story. I'll wait for the punch. Don't get smart with me, girlie. I'll have you know that in my shop in the cash register, I'm having the total day's receipts, which is summing up to more than nine dollars. You'll bring the rest to the food, then I'll go to the shop and get the money. You're playing my favorite song. Now look here, Buster. One of you is going to go down right now and get the loot, while the other one stays here until the first one gets back, if you get what I mean. Oh, fine. In this fancy schmancy restaurant, you are holding hostages, right? Right. Excellent. You eat up, Audrey. I'll be back in a flash with the cash. Bye, Gravis. Rum, wine, gin, bourbon. What? Scotch, rye, tequila, sake, manischewitz. Did you bring the money? Don't bug me with the money. I got to get drunk now. What flipped him? I don't know. Look here. Here, take it. Bring me anything. Bring me everything. Creme de mint. Everything you got. Okay. Travis, what happened? Don't ask. You look like you've seen a ghost. Ghosts I could handle. Don't ask. Why don't you tell me? Maybe I could help you. Help you couldn't. Try and eat something. It'll calm your aggravation. In my own shop. Audrey, you wouldn't believe it. I wish you'd break out and tell me. All right, I'll tell you tomorrow, right after I am telling the police. But Mushnick didn't come to the police. If he had, that might have been the finish of the unhappy story. It was not. You wouldn't be interested in selling a half interest in this place, huh? <laughs> Mr. Mushnick, we talked to the committee, and they said we could use your flower on the float. And guess what? We're going to feature Audrey Jr. Right on top. Boy, Can't you just picture it? I can picture it. Oh, won't the people just eat it up? Eat up the people. And we're going to have the big part of it open, so she can sit in it. Oh. The queen, with her crown and scepter. She'll be so cute. Oh, you could just eat her up. Eat up the girl. Oh, there's Seymour! Oh, oh my God! I got a toothache. It hurts. Oh, that's all my job. Oh, oh my God! Oh, 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 oh. Now, Seymour, talk on me. I got a toothache. What do you want to talk about? That plant. Is that a nice subject for to talk? The plant. The plant is great. It's it's four times bigger than it was yesterday. I saw. I saw. How come the plant is now so big? Oh, I don't know. But look at all them people out there. We only been open a half hour. We already done seventy dollars worth of business. Eighty-five. Now look, Seymour. You gave this plant a fancy name, Audrey Jr. But I want to know right now, what do just people call it? Well, it's a cross between a Butterworth and a Venus flytrap. Venus flytrap. And what are the habits of this Venus flytrap? Well, the book says it eats insects. It eats them three times in its life, and then it's full grown. Excellent. And how many times is this one eat? Well. Once or twice. You don't remember? Well, this is kind of an unusual type fly trap. That is a possibility. It may never eat again. I don't see how it could get any bigger. Then you think it don't need any more flies? Yeah. Oh, my tooth is just killing me. 
All right, excellent. You run along to the dentist. I'll take care of things here. Thanks, boy. Gravis, we've got to order more flowers. Tons of them. I'm making lots of money. It has been a hard day's night, and I've been working like a dog. Use this suit, but this guy, I, I, I should be sleeping like a log. Suit. Okay, and he, puts and, it on. and he puts it on, and he's got superpowers, but he doesn't know he doesn't how, how to use them. Not oh, all. Wow, that's, that's hilarious. Sweet. Oh, look who it is, everybody! It's our friend, the curator, who lives here, of course, in the. I've said it before, but let's say it again. The sub, 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 sub basement here at the TV station, and he's back with another. Fascinating item from the Merrill Movie Museum. Um, so, Mr. Curator, what do we have this week? It looks like some kind of artwork. So, this is an animation cell that was used in the production of the Walt Disney classic, The Jungle Book. Oh, the, the, the 60s version that yes, the Disney's the, did. Not, not the more recent live action version, but although live action, there's one or two live actors in the movie and it's right. mostly animated as well. But this is traditional hand drawn old school Walt Disney animation. In fact, the last movie Walt Disney worked on before he passed. So Walt Disney could have seen, actually looked at this. He, he may have. Wow. He may have. May have. It's good enough for me. Yes. So this is one of the vulture characters from the film. And there were four vultures. They were based on a popular singing group of the time that you may have heard of called the Beatles. No, Drawn a blank. Not familiar. Not familiar. Not familiar. Hard Day's Night. No, no, no. no. Hey Jude. No, no, no. 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 I'm more of a Lawrence Welk guy. No, no. Understandable. Okay. Understandable. So did the Beatles so do the voices? The Beatles did not do the voices. However, they did get, for one of the vultures from the film, they got Chad of Chad and Jeremy, oh, which was another yeah. popular now, now you're talking. Oh, yeah, I Chad know those and Jeremy. Guys. Those yeah, guys are they, amazing. They were on Batman. Yeah, yeah, I think one of them's still performing. Is it Chad or Jeremy? Yeah, it's Chad. I believe Chad. Okay. So Chad was one of the voices of one of the vultures wow. in the film. Amazing. Of course, the vultures are kind of side comedic characters. Mm -hmm. The main story is, of course, about Mowgli, the young boy who grows up uh, raised in the jungle by Bagheera the panther and Baloo the bear and uh, wow. has to face off against Shere Khan the tiger. So this, this is actually hand drawn. Like artists had to individually draw and paint each one of these in that form of animation, correct? Right, and that's Cartoons correct. were not done live back then. Like, no. Like, no, no, so each one had to be drawn in advance. Right, wow. they, they still do. Wow, they just wow. do a lot of it on computers it on now computers. rather than... I, I hate to break this up, but, you, uh, but you're, you're never going to meet Yogi Bear. All right, so now how were these... You know, we hear stories about animation cells and how fragile they are. How many of these survived? Or, or were they... You know, I've heard stories, you know, uh, artists say that, that, that the cells were just thrown away back in the day. Uh, there wasn't a lot of care used with a lot of them, but there is still a lot that does exist. You do have to watch out for replicas especially uh, companies like Disney and Warner Brothers have created a lot of commercial cells that they make available for purchase in their various souvenir shops and things like that. So how would you tell like the that. difference? Uh, you look at the, the provenance of the item, you look at the per person that you're purchasing it from, find, discover whether they're trustworthy. In this case, we bought it from a respected auction house. We could drop so a bunch a of these there. ourselves and sell them. No, no, we're not doing that. We're not getting in that game. So. Now, now these look very delicate. Like, how is there a process to this? Because I can see this is in two pieces. Right. There's a there's a background, and then there's the animation cell itself. Wow. So the background would be painted, and a lot of times you'd have a more detailed background than this. This happens to be a scene with just a, you know, a cloudy sky behind him. But uh, you'd have could actually have several pieces of background because you could have a, perhaps a tree branch that he's standing on or something like that. Sometimes the backgrounds themselves are in several layers, and then sometimes the animation pieces are also in several layers. You can even have different characters on different layers. So what you see is one one hundredth of a second in a film could actually be composed of several different drawings. That took an awful long time to draw. Yes, traditional and animation is pretty labor intensive. And clearly a lot of people had to be working on these films. Y yes. They, they, you wouldn't see one of these big features that was entirely drawn by one person. So these were, and these were kind of, you know, in a lot of ways, thankless jobs because these people didn't get the recognition even though they were doing this beautiful art for these amazing films. 
There, there were a few people at Disney that did get some, some recognition later in life. They were known as the nine old men that were kind of the, the big lead animators. One of them, Floyd Norman, is still with us. Only one is still with us from the original. They call them the nine old men. But yeah, everybody thought of, oh, Walt Disney. So Walt Disney is just doing all of this. That's not exactly how it worked any more than Chuck Jones was drawing every frame of a Warner Brothers uh, Bugs Bunny cartoon or uh, Matt Groening draws every episode of The Simpsons. That's not how that happened. Well, this is a fascinating piece and beautiful as well. Uh, why don't you folks get back to the movie here on Nightmare Theater? Anything yet? Uh huh. It's just over here. Seymour, who is the dentist here? You or me? I'll find that tooth. Mm hmm. Uh huh. Look at that stalagmite. Uh, uh, don't worry, it's gonna be an easy one, Seymour. I won't even use Novocaine. Oh, you broke the mirror in my mouth. Well, don't tell me about it, stupid. Just swallow it. Uh, all right. Yes. Let's see now, Seymour. See, I'll have this one, and this one, and that one, and I have to have this one, Seymour. It's Simo. only one, two. Seymour, who is the dentist here, you or me? Are you practicing dentistry without a license? No. All right. Uh -huh. Let's see. Uh, oh, shh. Seymour, oh, Seymour, oh, don't oh, be oh, there. Oh, oh. Look at that. Will you look at that, Seymour? I didn't know you were an elk. Look. You know, I can't afford an assistant. So I get this ready instant mix. It doesn't last very long, but it tastes good. Mm. All right, Seymour. Oh, stay away from me. Seymour. Uh -huh. You're trying to kill me. A duel. Aha. Who? <laughs> Is this Dr. Farb's office? Uh, just a minute. <clears throat> oh, yes. <laughs> I see it is. <laughs> uh, you, you can come in now. <laughs> My name is Wilberforce. Wilberforce what? Just... Wilberforce. My first name is Wilbur. My last name is Force. <laughs> I don't have a middle name. Well, you have an appointment, maybe? No, but you were very highly recommended to me by one of your patients, a Mrs. Eshiva. I do a lot of undertaking for her relatives. <laughs> well, as you can see, I have a customer now, and I'm all booked up for the rest of the day, so you'll have to come back tomorrow. Oh, I couldn't do that. I have three or four abscesses, a touch of pyorrhea, nine or ten cavities, I lost my pivot tooth, and I'm in terrible pain. <laughs> well, I, I can't help you today. Oh, that's all right. I'll, I'll just wait outside. <laughs> The patient came to me with a large hole in his abdomen <laughs> caused by a fire poker used on him by his wife. <laughs> he almost bled to death and gangrene had set in. I didn't give him much of a chance. 
There were other complications. <laughs> the man had cancer, tuberculosis, leprosy, and a touch of the grip. <laughs> I decided to operate. My, my patient just left. You, you could come in now. Oh, goody. <laughs> I didn't see the other man leave. Well, he went out the back door. You know, most people don't like to go to the dentist, but I rather enjoy it myself, don't you? <laughs> I mean, there's such... There's a real feeling of growth, of... of... <laughs> progress when that, that old drill goes in. I mean, I'd almost rather go to the dentist than anywhere, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> now, no Novocaine. It dulls the senses. <laughs> This is gonna hurt you more than it is me. Oh, goody, goody, here it comes. <laughs> oh, my God, don't stop now. Well, I made a lot of holes, and now I gotta fill it up with this here silver stuff. Well, aren't you gonna pull any? Well, uh... Oh, go on. Well, it's your mouth. It's been quite an afternoon. I can truly say I've never enjoyed myself so much. I'll recommend you to all my friends. Thank you. Bye. Bye now. Feed me. Oh, take it easy, Dracula. What do you think I'm carrying here, my dirty laundry? Should be enough for anybody. Well, goodbye, Dr. Farr. You may have been a crummy dentist, but you were a nice fella. I never meant to kill anybody in my whole life. I've killed two in the last two days. Well, but you asked for it coming after me with that knife and all. Fun voyage, Dr. Farr. You want anything else? See you in the morning. I'm Gerald Holm, and you're watching Nightmare Theatre. Well, hello and welcome back. Things are really beginning to pick up there in the flower shop, aren't they? Seymour is killing people. I mean, he's committing outright murder just to get ahead. Sometimes our deeds, while unsavory, lead to brighter futures for us all. And as this film demonstrates, sometimes ambition at the quest for power and recognition makes us do things we'd never dream of doing. I think I know what you mean. Sometimes you have to do things that might ruin lives to make things better in the long run. Oh boy, boy, are my ears burning. <laughs> you should try washing them. Sometimes I myself bathe twice a day just to make sure there's no cause for offense. What are you ever. talking about? As mittens, I have to bathe you all the time. I'm not sure I could explain it to you, but the one you call mittens and I are almost different entities. When I transform, I have little to no knowledge of my life prior to transformation. I can remember vague shadows. For example, I am grateful for the food you give me and have a vaguely unpleasant recollection of a trip to the vet which left me different. What does that mean? So you're saying when you're mittens, you only have a small memory of the man you are now and vice versa? Right. If I stayed like this, I'd gradually forget all about being mittens. And if you stayed as mittens, you'd forget in time who you are now. Sure. Sure. 
but that's rather unlikely. Hmm. While we ponder this, let's get back to the little shop of horrors here on Nightmare Theater. How's the wife, Frank? Not bad, Joe. Glad to hear it. The kids? Lost one yesterday. Lost one, eh? How'd that happen? Playing some matches. Well, those are bricks. Yeah, I guess so. Got a strange one here. Railroad people say they lost one of their best detectives the other night. Oh, yeah? Down by the yards. He's watching the refrigerator cars. Refrigerator cars? Ice thieves. Oh, yeah? What happened? Don't know. Vanished. Blood on tracks. Who's? None. Anything else? Dennis. Fog. Dead? Missing. Clues? Blood in office. Where? Skid Row. Ideas? None. Check it out? Yeah. Now we are on the case. Officer Frank Stooley and me. My name is Fink. Sergeant Joe Fink. I'm a Fink. Something? It, it's monstrositous. Yeah. And to think that you did it. Gee, Audrey, you don't have to kiss me. Don't you like me to kiss you? Yeah, but you don't like to kiss me. Why shouldn't I? Nobody else ever did. Well, I do like to. You do? You really do? You like to kiss me? Sure I do. Would you like to kiss me again? OK. That plant? Oh, boy, you kiss good, Audrey. Oh, I guess I just have a good kiss, sir. How, how, how did, it, did, it, did it? Would you like to go out on a date with me some night? When? Oh, sure I would, Seymour. Anytime. Tonight? OK. Oh, boy. Uh, about that plant. We got the list of flowers for the float, for the rose parade. I can't talk to you now, girls. Talk on Audrey. We got the list for the float. OK, let's take a look at it. OK. Hi, what's cooking? Look at my plant. My, what a large one. Yeah. Hello, Mr. Shiva. What's new? Oh, I, I got terrible news. My nephew Frankie just lost his little boy. Oh, that's too bad. How did it happen? He was playing with matches. Would you like to buy maybe some flowers? Uh, about 50 cents worth. Well, I'll get them for you. Look at my plant. Oh, I'm looking. And then grab us much name. Look, I'm a motion to grab us. That's my name. Just want to ask you a few questions. Questions ask me. Just about. want to ask you a few questions. I, I didn't do it. Do what? Whatever. Ever see this man? Man, I see pictures. Or why are you so nervous? You got a guilty conscience? No, why should I? Ever see this man? Man, I uh, see the, the, the picture. Dr. Farb. So you know him? And my dentist. Uh, he, 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 he maybe did something. Disappeared. Blood in his office. The other man, too. Blood in the railroad tracks. A few spare parts. Okay, the, 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 Dr. Farb is murdered. Is he? No, who knows? Not me. What do you think? He doesn't know anything. OK, Mushnik. If you hear anything about these men, call our office. Sure, I'll be glad to cooperate with the police. Hello, I'm sitting. Oh, isn't it terrible what happened to your boy, Frankie? Those are the breaks. <laughs> all right, Seymour. Now you tell me if that plant is finished all grown up. He's finished all growing up. You wouldn't kid your father. My father came home. Me, idiot! It's a finger of speech. Now look. I can't stand any more that plant. It's growing me out of house and home. Well, it ain't gonna grow anymore, I promise. How can you be so sure? It ate three times already. Who, I mean, what did it eat this time? 
about, about a million Japanese beetles. So don't eat no more. It's full. Grab us. There's a lady from some kind of a commitment outside. I think it's important. Excellent. By the by, I understand you want to take Audrey out on a date tonight. That's very good with me, because I am staying to keep an eye on that Meshugana plant. Where are we going to go tonight, Seymour? Oh, I just remembered I don't have any money. Well, that's okay. We could take a walk along the ocean or something. I got a great idea. We can eat dinner at my house. My mom's a great cook. Well, that's swell. Oh, boy, I'll call her later and tell her. Oh, that's remarkable. You like? Oh, I neither like nor dislike anything, my goodness. I happen to represent the Society of Silent Flower Observers of Southern California. How about that? Tell me, who created this magnificent blue? I did, me. Oh, and what might your name be? Seymour Krellboyn with a K. Krellboyn. Krellboyn. Raised it in a coffee can. This? Well, t tell me, Mr. Krellboyn, uh, is this a freak or, or can more be raised from the seeds? We should live so long. Well, I don't think there are going to be any more, Miss... Uh... Uh, Fischtwanger. Mrs. Hortense Fischtwanger. Uh, I think this is going to be the only one, Mrs. Fischtwanger. 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 Uh, it's probably indigestible anyway. At any rate, I have the honor to tell you, Seymour Curlboyne, that you have been selected to receive the annual trophy of the Society of Silent Flower Observers of Southern California. A trophy? Me? Such is justice. Uh, tell me, when do you suppose those large buds will open? Well, according to what the book says about the plants that I crossed, they should open day after tomorrow at sunset. Ah, very well. Then I shall return at that time to present the trophy. Good day. Remarkable. Oh, boy, I'm going to get a trophy. Oh, Seymour, I'm so proud of you. Oh, a real trophy. For Audrey Jr. We can put it on the floor in the rose parade. Oh, boy. Don't look at me. I I'm a terrible sight. I I'm a complete sea hag. She always says that. Oh, well, it's true. I haven't been feeling very well lately. Audrey, this is my ma, Winifred Krellboing. Ma, this is Audrey Fulcourt. She's my girl. Hi, Audrey. Are you hungry? I sure am. I could eat a hearse. Oh, <laughs> well, sit right down, and I'll go get the first course. <laughs> sit here, Audrey. You want me to take your sweater? Oh. Yes. Never mind that. Uh, well, well, now try this. <coughs> it tastes like cough syrup. Dr. Flynn's cough syrup. A toast? To Audrey Jr. No, to Audrey Sr. an eye on you. I don't let nobody get near you. Here comes the soup. Now, don't touch it till I get the, the flavoring. <laughs> Gee, Audrey, you sure look good by candlelight. Oh, do I really see more? Yeah. Here you are. I'll try it. Sure smells different. It's different. Some kind of oil, isn't it? God, liver oil. It's wonderful for the colon. And that's sulfur powder on the top. Feed me! 
I didn't hear it. Feed me. I heard it. I want food. A talking plant we got. I'm hungry. No. Hungry? And other fine kettle and fish. Who would you like to have tonight? You look fat enough. We not only got a talking plan, we got one that makes with smart cracks. Will you listen to me, you botanical bum? Food you wouldn't get. Not from Gravis Mushnik. I'm starved. Excellent. You would unpopulate the old skid row. Well, you can forget about it. You wouldn't get fed from Gravis Mushnik tonight. Good night. You'll get yours. I kind of like this chow mein. Uh, if it tastes a little bitter, it's because it's made of Chinese herbs and it's flavored with acromyosin and mm -hmm. Epsom salts. There ain't another cook in the whole world like my ma. That's what your old man said before the louse ran out on me. You know, if you're going to be married, you got to be a good cook. Well, maybe you could teach me. You think to get married? Well, he hasn't asked me yet. Who hasn't? Seymour. Seymour's too young to get married. Look here, a boy's got to go out and play around a little bit. Go out on the make and have a ball. Seymour, I don't want to have a ball. I want to be with Audrey. No, no look, Seymour. Oh, you promised you wouldn't get married until you bought me an iron lung. But you've been breathing for years, Ma. Well, it ain't easy. It ain't easy, son. Mister, I'm old and sick. I wouldn't know it even a fly. Come out in the light where I could see you. Man, please don't shoot. Please, please. I'm only Gravis Mushnik. You wouldn't want to kill me. Where would you hide the body? Don't worry, I'm not going to shoot you. Not unless you try something. Try something? I never tried anything in my life. I wouldn't try anything now. You want my money? Take it. You want I should go out and steal you some more? That's all right, too. I'll do it. Thank you very much. <laughs> I like your brand of hospitality. You'll excuse it, isn't more. I'm only a poor florist. Yeah, yeah. We got about 30 bucks here. Come on now. Where's the rest of it? I was in here this afternoon. I saw about 30,000 people in here. They must have spent some money. Where is it? There ain't no more money. They came in to look on the plant. It's a big attraction. Audrey Jr. Plant. Don't try to snow me, Jim. 30,000 squares didn't come in here just to look for a plant. I want it. They, 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 I don't got no more money, honest. Believe me. OK, let's try this. One, two, three, four. No, I ain't got no more money, honest. All right, try it the other way around. Five, four, three, two. All right, all right, they're ready. Okay, big bad, where? In the plant. In the plant. The big plant, Audrey Jr. Inside the big leaf. That's right, inside. <laughs> you get it open. Just knock. In there. In there. Inside. In the bottom. I don't see anything. Way inside. Right in the bottom. You got it a date with Audrey tonight. I am no more sitting up with that no good Nick plant. 
But gee, Mr. Mushnick, you don't have to sit up with it anymore. It's all grown up now. Excellent, smart guy. How do you know it don't be hungry no more? Well, because... Tonight you are staying. Then tomorrow they're coming and they're going to give you a trophy and then after that we are getting rid once and for all for that plan. Getting rid of it? Why? Don't ask why, why. The end, into the garbage can. Aloha. Oy. Yes, Mrs. Shiva. Oh, Seymour, you're wonderful plants. Oh, that's all right, Audrey. I'll grow other plants, even more wonderful ones. I know you will. Did you figure out what we're doing tonight? Yeah, we're going to a place full of beautiful flowers. We have to stay here. Yeah. Well, never mind. We'll have a picnic. It'll be just like going to the country. Oh, Did you boy. 3,000 pink azaleas for the arbor and the 9,000 yellow moms for the, for, for the border. Yeah, and the, the roses and for the front for and the back. No, around the back. What do you mean you're going to a picnic at night with that full cord girl? Don't you like Audrey Ma? She's out after your money. I don't have any money. Oh, she's a smart one. She'll latch on to you until you get some, and then goodbye fortune. But Audrey's an honest girl, Ma. Yeah, never trust a woman who's too healthy. But Audrey had a bad cold a couple of weeks ago. Oh, a cold, a puny cold. Why don't you get yourself a real female with something decent like mononucleosis or, or gallstones? Well, maybe she could catch something like that. The only thing she'll catch is you. And she'll take you off to some shady sanitarium and leave me to chiropractors and faith healers. I know when I'm not wanted. Oh, oh gee, Ma. Don't feel sorry for me. I'll just find a nice wet alley somewhere and curl up and wait for the end. Oh, please don't die till I get back, will you, Ma? I'll take care of you. I'll always take care of you. I promise. Yeah. Bye. Hello and welcome back. I noticed we have not mentioned Jack Nicholson's performance in this film. He Correct. In fact, he appeared in multiple of Corman's films multiple times from 1958's The Crybaby Killer. Corman produced that one to The Raven, The Terror, and this one. In fact, Corman gave many actors... Many actors and directors their start. <laughs> That's what you were going to say, right? Look at us. It's like we're finishing each other's... Sentences. Uh, yeah, look at us. Uh, say, El Sapo. Uh, yes, boss. Any, what can I do for you, boss? Uh, run down to my office and get me that bottle on the third shelf, the one with the wolf on it. Okay, boss. Glad to do it, boss. Anything for you. But are you sure you're going to be okay without me for a few minutes? I'm sure I can get by for a few minutes. Okay, here's the deal. I have an elixir downstairs, Essence of Peruvian Wolf's Bane. It counteracts and reverses the lycanthropy curse. One drink and you will never transform again. Are you interested? I most certainly am. Once the curse is lifted, I will be ready to provide you with great films and great commentaries. My passions are talking and film. Good. Hey boss, I got it boss. Is this what you wanted? Is this the one? Thanks. Here you go, sir. One drink, and you will never have to worry about turning into a werewolf again. But boss, but boss. Quiet. The man has spoken. While we wait for that to work, why don't we return to the thrilling confusion of The Little Shop of Horrors? Did you know that Corman helped start the careers of Martin Scorsese and Jonathan Demme? I have a lot to say about those two. Just let the medicine work its magic, and let's watch the film. Gee, Audrey, I never tasted food like this before. It's a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Peanut butter and jelly? What is that cure? Nothing. It's just a food. Well, what good is it if it doesn't clear up pimples or shrink your sinus tissues or something? You're just being silly, Seymour. Seymour... What do you want to be? Well, I want to grow things. If I had a lot of money, I'd go to the South Seas where they grow the most fabulous plants in the world. Well, that sounds exciting. Yeah. I'd like to go to the South Seas, too. There's no reason why you couldn't go. Would you take me with you, Seymour? Oh, I couldn't very well go without you, Audrey. Why not? Well, because, because I'm in love with you, Audrey. Oh, I'm in love with you, too, Seymour. 
What'd you say? I, I was just kidding. I'm hungry. Seymour. I didn't mean it. Why did you say it? Oh, food. You didn't even say that. Oh, yes, I did. I said it. I said it. Oh, I'm looking right at you. Uh, well, I'm a ventriloquist. You're what? A ventriloquist. Feed me. Seymour, do you feel all right? Well, I don't know. I'm not sure. Well, then stop all this nonsense and kiss me. I'm dying from hunger! All right, if you're so hungry, eat something, but forget about me. Gee, I'm sorry, Audrey. Give me to eat! If you can't control yourself, I'm going home. I need some chow! Oh! Uh, for an empty stomach! Audrey, please wait. Listen to me. I've listened to all the nonsense I want to hear, Seymour. You're a nut. You tell me that you love me, and then you act like a complete idiot. Please listen, Audrey. I'll be able to explain everything soon. Well, why can't you explain now? Because so many things are so important. I want to marry you, but I got to take care of Mom. Well, that plant in there is going to make it all come true. Tomorrow they're going to give me a trophy and I'll be famous. I'll be a big botanist. And then we can go to the South Seas, just like we planned and but all. But that doesn't have anything to do with what went on in there. When you're ready to come to your senses, Seymour, then I'll talk to you. Good night, Seymour. I'm getting pretty tired of you. I need food. I don't care what you need. Look what you've done to me. You not only made a butcher out of me, but you drove my girl away. Shut up and bring on the food. Don't tell me to shut up. You shut up. Who raised you from a bunch of little seeds? Who fed you all them high-class fertilizers and sat up all night with you when you were sick? Nobody else would have done that for you. Do you think anybody else would have brought you human beings to eat? You're darn right they wouldn't. Well, I've helped you, and you've helped me. Now shut your trap and go to sleep. I'm tired. Crow boy! Turn around! Close your eyes. You are asleep. Open your eyes. Now you will do as I say. Do you follow me? Yes, master. You will go out and find me some food. Yes, master. Now be gone and waste no time. My name is Leonora Clyde. How's the rain on the rhubarb? Master is hungry. Well, hello there. I gotta find food for Master. Food I gotta find for Master. For Master, I gotta find food. Maybe I can help. Who are you? My name is Leonora Clyde. I love you. Master wants food. 
Let the old goat wait. The night is young, and so are we. Master doesn't eat goat. Well, what kind of food does he like? Ooh! <laughs> That's more like it. Kiss me. What's the matter? Don't you like me? Too bony. Too bony? Nobody ever told me that before. Beef is better than veal. Uh, you're such a dodo. What do you call this? Chopped liver? <laughs> Master would like more fat. Speak for yourself, John. My name is Seymour. My name is Seymour. That's my name, too. Uh, are you interested, or are you just wasting my time? I never thought anybody would volunteer. Do you volunteer? Sure, I do. All right, if you're sure you want to volunteer. All right, my place or yours? I don't care. Well, flip a coin. I don't have a coin. Flip anything, silly. Well, there's a rock. Wet or dry? Wet. The search was narrowing, and we knew that soon we would have the killer. Not that we had any more clues than before, but we had to tell the chief something. I had that feeling in my bones that the mystery was drawing to its climax, and I was determined to be on hand. All right, out, out, out. Nobody is in. Today we have a special occasion for Seymour Krellboyne, which has invented the big plan. So I want everybody to please stay out of the way. We want Seymour! We want Seymour! We want Seymour! I tell you, this business is worse than being a conductor in a revoluting door. I'll be glad when this day is finished. What's well, a celebration? They're presenting my son with a trophy. Yeah, what do you do, run away from home? Please don't look at me that way, Audrey. I want to talk to you. I'm sorry, Seymour. I just don't understand you. I'll explain everything after the ceremony. You, police, what are you doing here? I heard there was something going on here this evening. Just thought we'd come by and keep an eye on things. Look, we don't need no eyes kept on Good nodding everything. Way, the Society of Silent Flower Observers has arrived, and sunset is almost upon us. Welcome, lady and gentlemen. We are honored for to have you. Still working on those disappearances. We think they were murdered. Hey, look here, young man. That's no way to talk at a time like this. Let me see your tongue. Mm-hmm. Now, what you got? Just the facts, ma'am. Trench mouth. <laughs> I know, I had it back in not nine. Better have that looked into, Frank. Whatever you say, Joe. Uh, Mr. Crowboy, uh, the sun is going down now, and uh, you do think those buds are going to open? I hope so. Because if they don't, Mr. Crowboy, we shall just have to present the award at another time. Oh, oh it's starting to open. It's the mark. That is open. <sighs> Isn't that the railroad cop? Look at the rest. <laughs> what do you think, Frank? They're all there, Joe. Yes, you're right. Mr. Crowboy, how do you explain this? I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. That's right, officer. He didn't mean to kill them. Seymour, you promised you'd explain. Looks like they're getting away, Joe. Yes, you're right. Let's catch them. Right. Oh, now the float will be perfect. Yeah.
You wouldn't find him here with the toilets. Let's go back. to give up, gentlemen. You wouldn't find him tonight. Look, the door's open, Frank. Yeah. He was such a good boy. Seymour! I didn't mean it. Well, that was some ending, wasn't it? Boss, boss, you said the elixir would make it so he never turned into a werewolf again. Well, I lied. Peruvian Wolvesbane makes him one-to-one -one permanently. He'll always be a werewolf. I could not stand being around that loudmouthed windbag for another minute. Do you know what it's like to be around a guy who thinks he's an expert on everything and who won't ever stop talking? Do I ever. Okay, I'm gonna let that go. I like things the way they are. You might be a buffoon, but you're my buffoon and he's your pet. And as bad as I hate to say it, you guys are my friends. You and I are both happy, and he will be in a few days, too. So let's get back to normal. But you know something? We've had a lot of fun tonight making fun of Mittens and his disease. And make no mistake, lycanthropy is a disease. And, and it is no laughing matter, folks. I mean, well, let's not go that far. I mean, it's a little funny. I mean, come on, look at this guy. He looks hilarious. Yes, yes, but we shouldn't make fun of people with diseases, should we, boss? I mean, would you make fun of me if I caught a disease? Absolutely. In fact, I already have some very funny jokes written about you getting a disease. Every day I hope you catch something. But you're right for once. I suppose we should not make fun of mittens and those like him. In fact, maybe we should start a public awareness campaign to address werewolfedness. There already is one, boss. The National Lycanthropy Foundation. Folks, lycanthropy affects people in every country. It even runs in some families. Get this, did you know that every 400 years, a werewolf is born into a certain family up north? That's the intro to the old cartoon Fang Face, and you know it. Give me that brochure. Let me see what this says. <clears throat> the National Lycanthropy Foundation needs your financial support. Please give generously so that werewolves like Mittens and that American guy what went to London and got attacked on the moors can live normal lives. Even though that guy died in the end, he probably has a relative that could use the money. So Sapo, a, a brochure for a national foundation mentions your pet werewolf in a movie from the 80s? Hmm. Let me continue. When you see the canister at your favorite gin joint, go-kart track, or fried bologna stand, please donate. If you do not see canisters, please send your checks and folding money, no pennies please, to the National Lycanthropy Foundation in care of El Sapo. <sighs> El Sapo, you made this whole thing up. This is fraud and you know it. It's a serious crime. You could wind up in prison and while I think you ought to be locked up, I can't support that until I can find someone to replace you. Well, both my hearts were in the right place, boss, and I was going to use the money to buy you something, after expensive and administrative overhead, of course. <laughs> what expenses can you possibly... Never mind. You never mind. As usual, I am 300 steps ahead of you. I was toying with you the whole time. There already is a national foundation, and I have a promo video. Why don't you folks take a look at this while I take El Sapo out to the woodshed? You know, they say it takes a village to raise a werewolf. Raising a good werewolf is a group effort. I know a family of gerbils raised El Sapo, and look how he turned out. Well, the world is a weird place, but this young werewolf can be saved. However, he needs guidance, help, advice. He needs someone who has been there and can guide him through the dark forests of life. And that's where Big Wolves, Little Wolves comes in. This young werewolf can go two ways. He could make us proud or ashamed. It's all up to you. 
Your generous financial support matches older werewolves with younger werewolves in an effort to teach life lessons through sports and other healthy, wholesome activities. Your contributions to Big Wolves, Little Wolves helps keep young werewolves off the streets, on the straight and narrow, out of trouble. A werewolf who can play catch with you won't steal your chickens or maul a little old lady, so won't you please help think about it. I don't remember getting beaten up like that, but I guess it would explain the missing teeth. See, that's a well-done PSA. It had everything, a good message, a good voice, and a shot of you getting beat up. Something for everyone. Why, I'd be proud to have that young werewolf on staff. I wonder if two werewolves would be good for the show. You mean you want to run a show with me and two werewolves? No, no, not really, just the werewolves. I mean, so folks, please, give generously. Keep young werewolves off the street, and let's put El Sapo back where he belongs, on the street. Oh, come on now, boss. I'm kidding with you, adult. What? I don't even want to ask, but what do we have on deck for next week, El Sapo? We have this. Aeronautics and Space Agency quotes officials as saying that the asteroid now entering our portion of the solar system poses no threat to Earth. A freak meteor shower spawns a killer man monster. You've got a scratch or something on your forehead. <laughs> He's being struck by a light that comes down from the sky. Whatever struck him from the sky change him completely from human form. He became a demon lizard monster. A beast of ancient legend runs amok, and only Indian magic can halt its rampage. Are you gonna try and stop it with a bow and arrow? Not with just any arrow, Mac. of the Native American warn the unwary. When the night is dark and the moon is high, no man dares to follow the track of the moon beast. Well, that looks absolutely awful. I don't suppose you'd know anything about that, would you? Not a thing, boss, not a thing. Okay, good. So tune in next week, folks, for Track of the Moon Beast right here on Nightmare Theater. And until then, may all your dreams be nightmares.